A very good morning to you and welcome. It's lovely to be together again. I've been reading recently a book on the Hebridean revival between 1949 and 1951, and it's been stirring reading how God came in a very manifest way and visited the island and the little villages and the crofters. Many came to know the Lord and God's people who were already in a relationship with Christ on the island, their relationship was fundamentally affected for good because of this manifest presence of the Lord. Now in revival, God is sovereign. We can't engineer it, we can't work it out or work it up, but God has given us instructions and principles in relation to what we are to do in the way in which we are to live our Christian lives. And one of the things we are to do is to pray. And if the people in the Hebridean island were favoured with his presence in that way all those years ago, how much we need that same presence today and to call upon his name. So let me remind you of some prayers from the Old Testament and one from the New that will encourage us to pray for the Lord to come and revive his people in the midst of the years. Ezekiel, I will build the ruined places and plant that which was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it, thus says the Lord God. I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. 2 Chronicles 7.14 If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek God's face and turn from their wicked ways, he will forgive them and heal their land. We read in Hosea, Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord, till he come and rain righteousness upon you. And the words of our Lord Jesus, Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we draw near to you by faith. We supplicate the throne of heaven. We thank you that there you are in the glory. Your name is holy. You are righteous and just. You are the God who is spirit. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth. You have made us for your own glory. And we come to you in our need in the consciousness of our sinfulness, and we ask for mercy. We thank you that that throne is the throne of heaven, and it is also a throne of grace. And we come to you asking for that grace, asking for the covering once again of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We realize we cannot plead anything of our own that will bring favor to you, we can only plead the name of Jesus Christ, and we ask for his sake that you would pardon us and renew us in our own spirits, that you would in our own day revive your people, revive the church of Jesus Christ with your presence manifest, glorious, humbling and uplifting. Lord, grant us your spirit, we pray, in these days, we look upon the nations, we look upon our own nation, and reverently we would say, it is time, Lord, for you to work, to change the hearts of the people from hearts of stubbornness and rebellion to hearts of contrition and brokenness and calling upon the Lord to have mercy. Oh, that you would do it, O oh Lord. Hear our prayers. We are such a needy people but we plead the name of Jesus Christ, the name that is above all names, honour him. And meet with us today. Grant a real sense of your help and presence as we continue studying the life of Jacob. 
And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn is the hymn in Christian Hymns 267. And the hymn is Rejoice the Lord is King, your Lord and King adore. Mortals give thanks and sing, and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say, rejoice. Like many of our hymns that we have selected for these morning services, this one is sung by Grace Community Church in California. <laughs> 